Some people get to live the dream. Everybody's got a different dream. Paul's dream is being Speed Racer. <laughs> Do you ever watch Speed Racer? Oh, yeah. That was my favorite, favorite show. That was a good one. And Racer X, his brother. Yep. Yeah. God, that was like my favorite. This is Paul Decker, and he had a little trailer out front that I've seen guys carry little race cars around in. I'm like, hey, you got you race cars? He's like, hell yeah. That was the answer, right? <laughs> so... Uh, I'm like, what kind of a car do you race? And he's like, well, let me show you. Show me. <laughs> so these, that one over there belongs to my son. That's okay. Step Racer Ford, which is a SCCA, Sports Car Club of America, Spec Racer car. I'm going to guess that your son's name is Dustin. Yep. All right. <laughs> this is awesome. Look at this. And Decker Sports Racing is the name of the company, in case you see them on the Indianapolis 500 someday. Is this something that your son's going to try to be a professional race driver, or is this just for fun? No, it's just for fun. This is just for fun. This, yeah. is, this, is, quite a, this is quite... I mean, he could be. He's quite good. He's really good. Yeah. Huh? How are you? Uh, I was national champion four times. Seriously? Uh, no way. Yeah. That's awesome. And so is this the kind of car you would race in typically? No, or? this... So this is an AMAC. An built by Bob, actually it's a Fox, built by Bob Fox. Okay. Um, and I drove it in the runoffs at Sears Point. Um, this, is a, this is an AMAC. An AMAC. And what does AMAC mean? Um, Art McCreary. What does that mean? It's just the, the guy's name. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And uh, we're going to apologize. I have very little battery. This whole thing might just shut off any moment. Yeah. So what? You're crashed. Pardon? You're a crash? Oh, yeah. This one's crashed right now. Oh, really? So what happens when you see these things crash? You just kind of look at it and try to rebuild the whole thing? And uh, you just do whatever, fix whatever's. You know, they're nice and safe. There's no... It's pretty solid. No so what was the worst thing that happened to this, this vehicle uh, in the crash? It just... Uh, oh, well, I see. Uh, There's some evidence. Yeah, there. The other side over there. Got munched. And, and what happened to the dude drive? Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what happened there? Someone uh, bump you or? No, a friend spun out in front of me and I. A friend of yours? Hit him, yeah. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So do you guys have a few beers and laugh about that? Yeah. Or? yeah. <laughs> there's no, no fist fights involved. No, no, I don't think there's ever been a fist fight <laughs> in one of these races. And so you typically race at Thunder Hill, which is, is that in, in Williams? Yeah, with Thunder Hill. I mean, we, I haven't raced in years. I ran this car. This car was actually built for George Lucas. Really? And, uh, he had yeah. me drive it for two years. Uh huh. And then he sold it to a friend, uh, Charlie Bailey, who worked at uh, worked at Lucasfilm. Awesome. So you know everything about these things. So this is where you impacted on this side. Yeah. So um, luckily, it looks like all your internals got saved in here. Yep. Wow, that's pretty. And you you have plans to like put it all back together? Oh, yeah. How long will that take you? A couple of years. A month. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so how did you get into like this kind of hobby? I mean, just, this is an interesting hobby. Just love, always love going fast in cars. And, yeah? You know, it's kind of neat to be able to do it on a track where it's safe. And you You're like Sammy Hagar. Do you have any, you get a lot of traffic tickets? <laughs> no, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah? They used to let you go a lot more though. Did you, yeah, to do, did you do some fun street racing occasionally? When, no, not really. No? no? Just, okay. By myself on the back roads. Uh huh. That's really, really fun. Now, is it just me? Or does Paul look just a little bit like Steve McQueen? Just saying. And so it looks like you've got four cars total here, and you've basically built your custom garage based on your hobby. Yeah. And you've got all this, these are what, lathes and all this metal. Lathe, mills, welders. And so, what kind of parts, what's the most elaborate part you've made yourself out of a raw piece of metal? Uh, well, I made the original shock, I made that whole car. I made, you made the whole thing? I made the whole thing, I made five of those. No way, um, and you sold some of them for? I sold some of them, yeah. Uh, Tom Foster from Foster Farms had one. In fact, I've got his now. Um, and what, what does a car like that cost when you're done custom building it? This is the first person that I know that's ever custom built a car. I was never fortunate enough to meet Henry, Henry Ford or, or even Elon Musk, for that matter. So at least I've met someone who built a car. <laughs> back, back when I built these, it was like 80, 85, 86. They were selling for about 
About 22,000. Now That's it? Yeah. It's a lot of work for her. Now it is. Um, and, you know, fixtures for everything and kind of like a little assembly line, I guess. But um, now they're, you know, many more thousands of dollars. You know, like you could, you were to buy a new card, 60,000 anyway. 60. Yeah. All right. But you'll give all my viewers a deal for 55, <laughs> right? Yeah. If at least five of them sign up. If it's five of you guys show up, we're going to do a deal right now, right here. Paul's going to build you a car for $55,000. You got to call him soon now. Uh, this is awesome. So how fast can a car like this go um, typically? Or Well, the nice thing about these is, I mean, you can see they got the gumball tires and um, they're the weight. So these have a, a one liter motorcycle engine with about... close to 200 horsepower in a car that weighs you know, eight, 800 pounds with the, with the driver, so uh, 850. So it's pretty much like the power of a big motorcycle, and you, then you give the tires so it sticks good. Top speed's gonna be about, I think the most I've seen is like 150 at auto club speed. Oh, that's pretty fast, but especially for such a small vehicle because this thing doesn't have a big footprint. Yeah. The thing wow. is that they corner good. They corner really good. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. All right. So is there any advice that you could give anybody who is just going to start building their own cars out of their garage? No. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like an expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I need to get you into plants. That's a much easier, <laughs> easier and there cheaper hobby. <laughs> well, thanks for the tour, man. This is awesome. This is, this is super cool. I just love seeing how people live. All right, that's it. Okay, Paul, what's the real reason I'm here? <laughs> uh, to look at our palm trees. Yeah? I love looking at palm trees. Palm trees are awesome. What's the history of these palms? So we bought these. They were about this tall, probably six, seven feet tall. And you brought them from where? We bought them from a palm tree grove we were coming back from a race at phoenix oh, okay and uh right after you get into california there's just acres and acres of palm trees yeah and we stopped and uh the guy you know let us pick which ones we wanted dug cool them up, and we laid them down in the race car trailer brought them home there was i think there was like five of them uh-huh and uh what happened was the year we planted them and then it froze oh and that's why this one is stunted um it was like laying over like that uh -huh. we it was dead i see the reason i'm here and uh <laughs> it actually uh came to life and it's yeah. been doing that you know forever it's stunted it's shorter than the other ones there was yeah there was another one here um, oh i see right that's what they look like after many years of being cut down and a couple uh about what know. happened to this one about five years ago, right about, right about here, it just fell over. Oh, really? And that's why we're, we've got you out here. We're worried about yeah. this one. Oh, no, I'm not worried about this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried about that, that one over there. That one will take care of itself. <laughs> so, all right, let me tell you what you got going here. These things can lean like literally 90 degrees out for 80 feet and be fine. You can use them as a bench, no problem. So this tree is absolutely no problem at all. It's got really good, firm adhesion to the ground. The base of the tree, the whole bulk of the tree is connected. It has so much tensile strength because they're all a whole bunch of little strands that they're just immensely strong. You could take those palm fronds up there or even this material here, get little tiny like pieces of it and try to pull it apart. It's almost impossible. Super why, strong. Why did that one fall over? I mean, it just, uh, it just dried out. It was just strands. It's hard to say now what happened to this one, but it could have had a fungus in it or something that attacked it. But what's, so this tree you don't have to worry about. This one over here is extremely interesting. Uh, this tree looks like this was the original trunk of the tree. Something happened to it to really irritate it. And it was probably a little runty tree. Was it kind of a runty tree to begin with? They were all the same. All it big? Just, okay. It froze. It froze and it froze. Yeah. It froze and just wilted over. Yeah. yeah. So this tree is at high risk of falling over like any moment. Um, you could probably push on it. And look at it. I can move this whole tree <laughs> because this is not much holding. So the, the beauty of the palm though, the palm is making this desperate attempt of sending roots out 
of what normally would be above ground trunk. And it's like, geez, well, maybe I can find some dirt and anchor myself. If you were to build a beautiful like, like rock wall around this thing, maybe even like a seat wall at seat height, like kind of high, like this high here that matches up with these roots, and you fill this whole thing in with soil, all those roots will just go whoosh into the ground, and they'll uh, totally solidify and strengthen this tree, and then they'll be uh, under no risk of falling whatsoever. But you have a, probably about, this is testament to show you how strong this material is. You only have about 10 inches diameter of trunk down there, which is holding what amounts to probably 3,000 pounds of palm tree. It's, the whole thing's full of water, so it's immensely heavy. But yeah, so uh, I would say that if you don't do that, I would probably cut the tree down because it's kind of, it's going to fall and wreck that fence probably. So um, anyway, those are my... How long would it take it to uh, get stable if we did oh, that? Oh, just like it? a year or two. Once those roots sense moisture and soil, they will immediately shoot out in one season. They'll just like, they'll, they'll fill the whole thing. It doesn't take very many of those roots to like really anchor things down. What's puppy's name? Rocky. Rocky. Come here, Rocky. Show everybody. Listen, come here. Come on. You're a pretty boy. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You like palm trees? You like palm trees? Oh, yeah. We're going to save your palm tree. Okay. Rocky. Oh, 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 oh. Rocky. Get out. <laughs> if you break it, you buy it. And I think I broke it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I guess I need to lose a little weight. All right. That's the story on that tree. And there is your reed avocado. And Kristen, you were saying that Paul was not entirely truthful with the extent of his mechanical addiction. <laughs> There's some hidden there. There's more. There's more. Not just this big, huge, long garage filled with race cars that people would dream about having. <laughs> and we get to see it? You're going to show me? I'll show you. <laughs> okay, Christine's good. So Paul is busy working on his grapes up the hill. Uh, and he's up there tying his grapes. He has no idea that we're going to go see his addiction. Um, right down here. And look at this beautiful view of the... Of the uh, what do you call this plane? Is, is there a name for this? Uh, it's the... No. Not no? Really. There needs to be. I'm going to call it the... Uh, the Petaluma Plain. Um, anyway, so it looks like uh, there's more Becker racing uh, paraphernalia down here, but I'm also seeing quite a collection of land cruisers. So he, he's a multifaceted mechanical he is. man. Yeah. So how long has he been doing the land cruiser thing? Oh, 20, 30 years. Do, do, yeah? yeah? And how'd you two meet? Um, I worked in the deli where he used to come for coffee every morning on his way to work. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so <laughs> he, he was already addicted to all this stuff when he found you? Oh, uh, you know, over the years, it's taken on a life of its own. <laughs> this is so, oh my God, this is so awesome. So look, he's got all this stuff. Like Toyota for, oh my gosh. Like, what, do you have any idea what this is, Christine? FJ40. Um, oh my gosh. For a ground up restoration. And so, does he sell this stuff? Is this kind of his business? Or can people buy this stuff from him? Or he just, he just likes to fool around with it? He likes to do the full restorations. And then once they're done, maybe he'll sell it. Maybe he'll sell it. Sell it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this video might spawn some, uh, some interest here. <laughs> Look, you guys. Oh, it's the treasure trove. Here's the, here's the body part. Oh, look at that. Here it is. Yeah, just waiting to get painted and put back on the frame. Here it is. Look at, like, just the sublime pieces of art we have here. And that just even that grill right there hanging up. Here's all his racing tire collection. Got to have your racing tire collection, all your rims ready to go. Um, what is that thing right there? What's that? That's, that's come crazy. Oh, that's a big old... Ex that's a big old extended Land Cruiser. Um, Look at that. It's either a 45 or a 55, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. He had a, he had a vertical 
from like 1970 through 86 at one point. I mean, what do you mean a vertical? One of every Like year. every year? Yeah. That's like a straight flush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's more. There's more. There's always more. Look, he's got all the seats. If you're missing a Land Cruiser seat, maybe he's got the seat for you. I don't know. Look at Just look at this little scene here. Just an endless sea of Land Cruiser hood. Wow. So, oh, this is, and there's, oh, look at all the parts, axles. This is like Land Cruiser heaven in here. There's a dude in Oakdale at the bridge, the covered bridge above Oakdale. It's, uh, what's the, town, the name of that town? And he's got like 20 of these things out near the highway. I bet Paul knows him. Probably. Yeah, they must be buddies. It's so. a small circle. I bet. Of true collectors. So he's just looking like in the paper for somebody that's getting rid of a Land Cruiser and he goes out there and makes a deal? He, he used to. Yeah, is he slowing down? Here's yeah. one that's a truck. That's my style. I need a truck. Look at that. When he's done with that one, tell him to give me a call. All right. Yeah, it might be some avocado deliveries. And he's got one back there that's uh, camouflaged. Yeah, that one's a truck too. Do, do you have, oh, that's a truck too? Mm-hmm. I kind of like the idea that no one can see me coming. Camouflage. <laughs> What's your favorite? Oh, look at the red patina on this one. That's cool. You got to keep yeah. that one the way it is. That's classic. Does he like patinas or does he like get them all painted up? He gets them back to original. Like as brand close, new. Yeah, as close to possible. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Parts are difficult these days, though. Yeah? So you have to buy old Land Cruisers just to get the parts. You know what I have? That's you know what, what people do? You know what my fetish is? What? Suzuki Samurai's. Oh my god. I almost delivered your trees. Wait, I just gotta see there. I just can't. There's like I might only come here once. What else is there? You've got a bug. You've got a boat, another boat, and you've got a cool classic Mercedes. Um yeah, so I and then a whole bunch of little mini racers. Go-karts. Are, are these for your kids or what? They were. We have a go-kart track behind them. Oh you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go -kart. Well, How long have you been here? Thirty-five years. Oh, it takes that long just to set the place up. And then, you know, it's always good to just store a partial Land Cruiser just up on the shelf, just in case you need it, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, so what's it been like being married to this guy? This, sounds, this is kind of an adventure. It's an adventure. Yeah, what's your, so you're into gardening, I know. What, what, yeah. Do you have any weird fetishes like this that, no. that you can no. talk about? No? no? No. Okay, you're just one of those just, normal people. I just go along for the ride. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for sharing. <laughs> sharing and this uh, is my favorite. That's your favorite. That's my favorite. And why is this your favorite? Uh, it's very unique. Okay, and what makes it unique? Open. Um, it is like the framework. I, it, it just, there's something different about the shape of it that I really like. Oh, it's got the, uh, the, the bench seats in the back. It's got the bench seats in the back, which is typical for an FJ40, so that's not unusual. Okay. Um, but. Wow. There's the cluster right there. Look how simple that is. I love the simplicity. Yeah. Compared to like the car I have out front, I can't understand two thirds of all the stuff in there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I need like a full tutorial and I've had it for a year. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much there for the tour. Go. That was super awesome. And um, I'm going to end on uh, what I like to call patina. <laughs> That's patina right there.